Welcome to Power and Glory broadcast your crossroads. I am John King Hill. Uh, for those of you who have great appetite to experience the depth of God and the unusual power of God, I want you to get yourself ready. Get a pen and a paper and find a quiet place and go with me into the hidden realms of God. Before we proceed, I want to bring in our beloved brother, Roy Fields, to take us into brief worship experience, and I will be right back with you immediately after this.
Come on, lift up your voice. Don't just clap. Lift up your voice to him. There is no other that fills us with wonder. Sing it out. Lord, I'm amazed by all you do. Each day is another day we discover the everlasting and mercy new. And it's all because of It's all because of Come on, just get lost in worship tonight. And it's all because of you. Thank you, Lord. I should be dead, but you kept me through. Welcome back. I want to take us into the dimensions of the glory that will alter our gene, our DNA, and our personality. I want to show us how our earthly identities disappear in the glory. The product of creation must by default omit biological and genealogical traces. Therefore, mysteries of the sons of God must come by revelation rather than the processes of conception and birth. I want to explain to you what that means. In fact, God's created works don't know their death of birth or historical backgrounds. Just as children have to ask their parents their birth records or dates of birth. And the reason is because it's the parents that delivered the children or gave birth to the children. And therefore, they are the ones that recorded the accurate timing of their birth. Likewise, when you look at the labels that are fixed to products, those labels are not fixed by the products by themselves. The manufacturers are the ones that fix those labels to those products because the manufacturers know the dates of the productions and the releases. This is why they can affixate on those products the best time that the product is good for use. They can put the expiration time or expiration date on the product. The physical contact of reproduction is what connects the dots in investigating biological and genealogical linkages. If you want to check somebody's background, like the genealogy, like the biological traces, what makes it possible is the family lines. You can investigate that this person came from this lineage and this one was given birth by this person. But the sons of God are not the product of sexual intercourse. The reason is because they are created in God. This is where I want us to look at. Transformation is equivalent to new creation. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things will pass away. 
behold, everything becomes brand new. So when you look at transformation, it is equivalent to new creation. Things can be created totally brand new. And the already created things can also experience a change and a whole transformation. The fullness of life and the power are greater than reproductive mechanisms of physical conception and the birth. Sons of God are created, not born. And I want you to take your time and look at the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Remember that the Lord God created Adam out of the dust of the earth. No human being gave birth to Adam. And if you push the envelope, you can look at Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Even though Jesus came through the canal of the womb, yet he was created inside the womb of Mary. Jesus was not conceived through sexual contact. And I also want you to look at Luke chapter 3 verse 38. If you begin to look at the genealogy or biological traces of Adam, you can verify how the Bible took you through the causes of trying to trace his lineage. You're going to see this one was conceived and given birth by this, and this one was born by the other. And then when you get to Adam, you see Adam, the son of God. Same thing with Christ, the second Adam and the son of God. This is why sons of God are purpose-driven. Sons of God are purpose-driven because life and power are secrets of purpose. The infusion of life and the power can bypass the laws of growth and maturity, which is to say that in the realm of God, sons are transformed or created new by the life and the power of God. I want us to look at that Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living soul. There's no sexual intercourse. So when we go to Luke chapter 1 verse 35, you see, And the angel answered and said unto her, that was Mary, that angel Gabriel was talking to, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest, that's the great power of God, shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Here, we see the first Adam without the consciousness of death. And also how the second Adam died to enter the fullness of the glory. The sons of God operate in the power of creation, the power of resurrection, and the power of revelation because they are created with their full potential. And they rise spontaneously to embrace their supernatural life. Number one, they were created. Number two, they were raised up to life. Number three, they were exposed to unusual abilities beyond academic or institutionally learned behaviors. And number four, they appeared or placed in their destinations. We are tracing their behavioral patterns. How would they operate as sons? This is a higher position and a deeper depth in God. Always, purpose and destiny meet at the same intersection as part of election or to be chosen by God. To understand the spontaneity of the sons in the realm of God, we have to pay careful attention to their makeup. In his image, after his likeness, the external structure is designed to express the appearance of the creator like a reflector. And likewise, their functionality is patterned after the behavioral characteristics of a God. So we are seeing life and the power interacting beyond academic lecture or rehearsals. Creation as completed works are not derivatives of academic ingenuity, 
because they are perfected by life and power to operate without additional supplement and the support systems. And so if you look at the life of Adam, you see what happened. He didn't have to go to school uh, because he was operating in the fullness of life and power in the realm of God beyond what any human being can learn in any academies. Life is autonomous and giving the gift of life is a part of fulfilling the order of life. In other words, you cannot borrow life. So the revelation of the sons of God is exposing the life and creative power of God Almighty. What a son needs is a spiritual DNA of the father to be established in his nature. And nature is a natural occurrence. The free flow of life shows a spiritual establishment beyond a personal control. When something is created, the component ingredients or makeup of the created work are the keys to the performance and longevity of that product. Life guarantees the durability effect while power bestows the performance capacity. You see, everything is put together in place so that that thing can just function the way that it is designed and created or manufactured to work. This is why spiritual success is not labor-driven, but possessing sonship inheritance. A lot of people of God, the reason why they have not gone to the place where they're supposed to be in life is simply because they have to go through certain process in God to be placed or to enter into that place of their fullness in God. And that is what is going to make things work in their fullness. Nature is inherited just as material things are inherited. So in his image, after his likeness, is perfecting the spiritual order of life. Life comprises all the amenities necessary to live the fullness. And it is the reason pursuing after power only often destroys genuine spiritual growth maturity and establishment in God. In the natural realm of life, everything is introduced, nurtured, and raised up. This is not the fullness of life and power because the manual works invested into achieving the goals involves taking permissions from different opposing laws. The restraints are what creates additional delays. If it is not the right time, if it is not the right season, if it is not the right day, the right month, and the right year, everything has to remain on hold. You can only satisfy the laws by doing them, or you can defy the laws by operating above them. Because the sons inherit the nature of God to operate in the fullness of his abilities. It is rising above the rudiments of the laws, concepts, methods, doctrines, and otherwise. I am showing us a place that is beyond the way that things normally work in this life, the things that we are familiarized with, how life is run in this earth realm. In the glory realm, it's a different thing entirely. We have to see that nature is above the law. That's what you see in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through verse 23. The law is an enactment, but nature is the core of life. The gift of life is similar to operating under licensing agreement until the expiration or termination. So power is transferable to some degrees unless there is understated policy or stipulation demanding for whole consolidation. 
For example, the life or all authority and the power are non-transferable because you are dealing with personification. This is why everything is experienced. Now, here is what I mean to help you understand it better. God said, I am the life. I am knowledge. This is a personification. Because it is talking about him or his identity as a person. Therefore, that is not transferable. But God can give you knowledge. God can give you life. God can give you understanding. All these are functioning to some degree. But you are not the life. You are not knowledge. You are not understanding. That is the separation. A personal life and abilities cannot be easily transferred to another person there is no other god besides me or like me and none will ever be that's why when we get into the glory of god we don't become another god almighty and all powerful or become the life and all the you know personal characteristics and abilities of god here you will begin to understand why the glory transforms all things to relinquish their life, authority, and the power to God, who is the life and whom all authority and power belongs unto. Everything that belongs unto God is returned to him upon spiritual unification. You can look at John chapter 17, uh, verse 1 through verse 5 and verse 22. This is the revelation of the mysteries of self-sacrifice. To relinquish or to give to God what belongs unto God. We are his image bearers. But until he infuses us with his life and with his power, we cannot function like him. The children of the fallen man are products of reproduction or procreation. They are formed in their mother's womb through sexual intercourse. Spiritual unification, on the other hand, is a consolidation of all things. And this is the mysteries of spiritual inheritance. By giving your life wholly unto God, you enter the fullness of his life to gain accessibility to the fullness of his extraordinary abilities. When God said in the book of Genesis 1 uh, verse 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness, it is because there is no other God beside him or none like him. So only God can create man to appear like him and to function like him how by putting his life into him and releasing his unusual power over his life if not there's no other way to do it because a man cannot get up and begin to manufacture the life of god or to manufacture the power of god so a lot of times you see the people of god uh, thinking that well we can just get the power of god however and we can get the life of god just by reading the scriptures only or studying you can study to show yourself approved unto god but the life of god is not a matter of study you need to receive his life and if you want to walk in the fullness of his life you need to lose yourself your life to enter into the fullness of his life this is the example that jesus christ showed us as the true son of god the only begotten son of god so there's a lot of things today that we are mistaking that we need to begin to correct. If we are going to move in that place where Jesus is now, where the first Adam was in the Garden of Glory, we're going to have to know that, look, we need the glory of God. There's no way that we can achieve any of these things by our own self. We need God to make it possible in our lives. Even with the gift of God, the gift of the Holy Spirit. We can achieve great success. 
with impartation, we can achieve some type of success or great success with the release of the portions or levels and measures of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But remember something, that there is a difference between operating in the office and operating as a son. Office is a reward system. As an official, you are paid for your work efforts. But as sons, you inherit all things in your pursuit to experience the fullness of God's blessings in your life. You have to know that there is a major preparation required for you and me and every child of God to be able to reach into that place. A lot of people of God stop somewhere along the line. They don't follow the path that the Lord has designed for them to come into. Remember that if Jesus had to go through those things that he had to go through, you should know that God will also allow me and you to go through some things just to be able to fully position us. He is looking at his son. It's been over 2,000 years now that Jesus Christ, the second Adam, came. So you have to see that things are winding down. Things are speeding up. Things are accelerating. We are experiencing unusual acceleration in this time. So you have to begin to look at how to position yourself. I'm getting ready here to wind down. I want to stop here for now. I hope your life has been revolutionized and greatly impacted. I will be back again with you for more on the glory of God. Until next time, God bless you.